got to cry out to him and call up on him because he's going to do it for you. Amen. I believe that it's the year of the open door. God has shown me that and many other things. 5778, the year on the Hebrew calendar. Then number eight is a picture of a door or a gate. Amen. But it's not just a picture of a door or a gate. It's a picture of an open door. Are you hearing me today? An open door, an open gate. Amen. That God is opening onto his people. And I believe one of the greatest doors that are opening this year for this nation, for this city, and for us personally is a move of the Spirit like we've never seen before. Now that's not what I'm preaching about, but I believe that is one of the greatest things. One of the things that God showed me, it was my last, not my last day in Kenya, but I think it was about halfway through the trip. I was in a decent hotel before we went on to a, another rougher area. Amen. But I heard the Lord say, Deborah, it is a year of the open door. And the greatest door that I'm opening is a move of my spirit. It's revival, whatever you want to call it. But there are open doors in your life, church. There is revival about to break out in your families. There's, about, there's revival about to break out in your finances. There's revival about to break out in the giftings and the anointings and the new mantles that he's wanting to release upon your life this year. Amen. Thank you, Diane. Hallelujah. I usually preach with the keyboard. I appreciate that. Amen. But it's the year of the open door. Someone say, it's my year. God's opened a door. And there might be many doors. But you have got to choose to walk through that door. And one of the ways you're going to walk through that door is through expectancy. It's through believing that God is able. And that's what I want to preach about. Because I don't want to just tell you what God is doing and what God is wanting to do. I want to tell you, how are you going to get through those doors? How are you going to access what God has for you, church? And I'm telling you today, every single one of you, um, the doors are opening. The door is open. And you can access it and you can go to the other side amen to what God has new opportunities this year some of you are going to be in places you've never been it doesn't mean it's the nations it doesn't mean you have to cross the seas but you're going to be in places you've never been and you're going to release things you've never released before and you're going to see people and you're going to see signs and wonders and miracles and you're going to see a harvest tomorrow I'm going to preach about what God is showing me about the harvest there is a harvest which your name written on a church. It's time God has said the greatest of the greatest harvest is being released in this year as we begin to walk through this year. Glory to God. And that's not my message, but new opportunities. Say, God, I'm ready for that. Whether it's a promotion at a job, whether it's a new place you're going to work, whether it's a ministry that you've been pregnant with, God wants to release it this year, church. Whether it's something you've been dreaming about the last years and it seems like everything has come against you and every time you've taken a step you feel like you've taken two steps but backwards I'm saying walk through that door and you're not going to walk backwards hallelujah because God says he's going to do things and he's going to do things with ease for you I believe it amen hallelujah I believe it glory to God pastor Isaac hallelujah God has connected us together and we've been praying and crying out early in the morning for a move of God in this spirit and there's some things that God is releasing and there's some strategies that he's showing us. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, it's going to be the year for this city, church. It's going to be the year. Because God is going to do it. And the Lord was showing me all those tears and all that weeping that would happen at five in the morning here. He says, you're going to see the fruit. You're going to see it come forth. Amen. None of it was in vain. None of it. Hallelujah. And we're going to continue to follow what the Lord is showing us. Amen. Because we're walking through those doors for this city. We're walking through those doors for our families. We're walking through those doors for ourselves. Amen. For the things that God wants to release. The Lord was showing me that everything you need financially, when you walk through those doors and what he's going to show you and what he's going to open up, it's already there, church. It's already there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So new opportunities. Are we ready for that? New assignments. New mantles. New visions. Dreams. Anointings. And I say yes. Do it God. You've got to believe it. You've got to accept it. And I'm here to tell you these are not words to make you feel good. These are words coming from the heart of the Father for you. 
And you can believe it or not believe it, but church, if I was you, I'd believe it and I'd receive my portion. Hallelujah. Because nobody can do it for you. This is the heart of the Father for you. For this year, for those who have been tried by the fire. And I think every one of you can lift your hands. Who have laid their lives down. Who have given all. Amen. Holding nothing back. It's time. Amen. Hallelujah. The yes in your heart is making room. It's opening doors. And I believe God's promise. I didn't put it on the brochure. But it's promised for us this year. Church is 1 Corinthians 2, 9. And it says what no eye has seen. What no ear has heard before. What no human mind has ever conceived before. God has prepared these things for you. For those who so love it. And that is you. Are we excited, church? Amen. But one of the things God had me pre actually I preached somewhat on it last Sunday. He said, tell my people they have to believe that I'm able. Tell my people they have to expect it. Do you know you can have faith? And you can believe that, yes, this was God's word. That, yes, God is saying this, but you're not expecting it to happen for you. We have got to expect it. And that's what I want to preach on today. Amen. I hear the Lord saying unto you, expect more in 2018. Expect more in 2018. We need to expect that he will do what he said he will do. We need to expect that he will visit in a fresh new way. Hallelujah. We need to expect that those loved ones are going to get saved this year. We need to expect that those who need to be set free are going to be set free this year. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to expect that when God says he's going to open the windows of heaven over you and pour out a blessing that he's going to do that for you. You need to begin to expect it, church. You need to begin to see it. You need to begin to declare it. You need to get up in the morning. Amen. We need to start getting radical. Glory to God with the words of our mouth. Amen. We need to test God. We need to prove Him. If God said it and we are willing, hallelujah, to walk through those doors and expect it, watch and see what He will do. Glory to God. We need to expect that this is the year of the open door and open opportunities. I want to tell you today that expectation is the breeding ground for the miraculous. Get ready for the miraculous. Get ready for the miracles. Expect miracles every day of your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to turn to Acts 3, 2 through 5. There's a couple scriptures I want us to look at. Are we all doing okay? Are we all expecting? Amen. We are expecting, Lord. And we want to, I love this true story. I mentioned it on Sunday. Even though I'm using some of the same scriptures, it's still going to be different. Amen? So we go to Acts 3, verse 2. This is a story about the lame man that was healed. And it says in verse 2, And a certain man that was lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms from them. Amen? And fixing his eyes on him with John. Peter fixing his eyes on this lame man with John. See, he was perceiving something there. And Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention. The lame man gave them his attention when they spoke, when they released an instruction. Amen? And he did it. The Word of God says that he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And listen, church, we know the story. 
He gets up and he walks for the first time. Signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. Come on. This was a miracle. Glory to God. He was expecting to receive something from them. That's what the word of God says. He was expecting. It might not have been the thing that maybe he thought he was going to receive because God works over and above, above what we even think. Come on, church. And that's what the season that we're in. You might be expecting one thing, but God God can overdo that one thing and he can release something greater. He did not receive the money that he thought he needed at that time, but he was able to jump up and walk for the first time in his life, get his own job. Hallelujah. And who knows what God did with his life after that. Glory. So much, so much greater than, than what his mind could think or imagine. Are you hearing me, church? You might believe in God for $10,000, but I'm telling you what, he can give you $100,000. I believe this is the hour that God is going to go over and beyond for us. We need to start reaching out. We need to start believing him. Amen. The Lord is saying, reach further than you've ever reached. Believe further than you've ever believed. And allow me to stretch you. Allow me to take up those 10 pegs and move them out here out of your comfort zone come on someone it's the day to take a risk it's a day to take a leap it's a day to believe God when God speaks hallelujah don't try to figure it out but get past that and jump and leap hallelujah into what the Lord has put in your heart are we willing to do that and that's what this man did he was expecting to receive something and he did exceedingly abundantly above all that he asked. He never had asked for that, I don't believe. He was asking for alms. Are you with me today? But God did something greater. Are we ready for God to do something greater with us? Are we ready? You cannot even think or ask for all that God wants to do. He wants to do even more and greater that you've not even thought about. Are you in position? Are you in line? Are you walking through that door, church? I believe that's what he showed me. I believe that's what he's put in my heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know some things that God is showing me for 2018, but it's going to be even beyond that. It's going to even be greater than that. Amen. It says in verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yeah. He asked for alms. He was obedient to the word. I think we've been hearing about obedience. Amen? We heard this morning that delayed obedience is disobedience. Disobedience is not going to get you through those doors. We've got to obey, church. Amen. And he obeyed. He did what they asked. And he was expecting to receive something. And God gave him the ability to walk. God gave him a supernatural miracle. Hallelujah. And why? Because he expected. Why did he jump up and leap? Because he expected Amen. to receive yes. something. Do you expect, church? Amen. What are you expecting? What are you expecting? we got to know something. We've got to expect something, even though God's going to do exceedingly abundantly over and beyond. But we got to be expecting something Amen. of what he's dropped in our spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's going to be new and it's going to be something you've never seen before. It's going to be something you never walked in. I use this example. My daughter is pregnant. The doctor said she could never have a baby again. But she's showing. She's expecting. And she's going to have a baby in May. Now, we're all expecting in the spiritual realm, I believe. And when, for her in the natural, when that baby comes forth, that baby is not going to be like anybody else's baby. That baby is not going to look like anybody or, or have the personality of any other baby or any other person on the face of this earth. Are you hearing me today? It's going to be 
new, oh, brand new. That's right. You understand? And that that God wants to do for you is new. Yeah. Don't compare to the right, to the left. Don't say, oh, look at them. No, look at what God wants you to expect. Look at what God is wanting to do in your life. Come on. You are special. He loves you. He loves you the same as the next. We have just got to believe him we've got to know who we are in him and we've got to know that god wants to bust us out of where we've been locked into and he wants us to begin to expect to release that amen amen that new amen. glory to god isn't that good yes. hallelujah god says i'm gonna amaze you yeah i'm on. gonna amaze you come this on. year hallelujah You've been singing that I'm an awesome God. Just wait and watch the awesome things that I will do for you. Church, don't walk out of here and forget these words. Write them down and say, you know, even if it's hard, I'm going to do something different this year. So I can walk in something different. I don't want it to end the way other years have ended. Grab a hold of this church and make yourself line up with this word. Make yourself line up with what's being released at this conference. Hallelujah. Don't slip back into the way it's always been in the past. Hallelujah. I want to just turn to Ephesians 3.20 just because I've been speaking it. But I want you to see it in writing. And this would be a good word to write on your mirror. Put in the front of your Bible and put your name in it and begin to speak it. Begin to see it and to know that you are expecting something that is beyond. We're going to Ephesians 3 verse 20. Are we all there? Amen. Are close to there? I love this scripture. It's packed. Now to Him and he's the one that we've been worshiping. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. He's able, church. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything you are thinking you want him to do. Wow. Take some time to wrap your mind around that. Above everything. Just think of what you would like God to do. What you know his promises for you. And I'm not going to speak of what we're believing, but it's some big things. But he says... I want to do exceedingly over and beyond this year. I've already opened the door. Hallelujah. It's not shut to you anymore. This is your appointed time. This is your hour. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a place that God calls exceedingly abundantly over and beyond. Amen. He's able, church. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Even beyond your imaginations. Jesus said in his word, I believe this was preached last night or this scripture was mentioned either this morning or last night. But I love this one. And this is one that God put in my heart for this year. He says, Deborah, ask. And you're going to receive. But you're going to receive over what you ask. You're going to receive greater than what you're asking. Because that is my goodness. And then he says, Deborah, seek, and you're going to find it. What are those things we're seeking for? Are we seeking for deeper relationship with him as we heard preaching? Do we desire to so abide in him? Do we desire to be so like him? He says, if you seek it, you're going to find it. It's not if or maybe or it never works for me. Stop saying those words and say, God says, if I seek for it and if I desire it, it's going to happen for me and I'm going to find it and I don't have to look at everybody else that's got what they've got, but I'm going to find it for myself. It's not going to come from a prayer line. Come on, church. It's not going to come because someone lay hands on you. It's going to come because you sought it. You went after it. You kept on pressing into it. I promise you today, you will find it. 
The word of God says if you knock, the door will be open unto you. What are those things, church, that we need to open up unto us for this year? Come on, I'm going to preach it tomorrow. This is going to be the greatest harvest, the beginning of the greatest harvest I believe we're going to see begin to be released this year. And we've got to grab a hold of the door that God's opening on us. It might be this city. It might be where you're living. It might be other nations. It really doesn't matter. But God is saying souls. Amen. Souls. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's going to show you. He's going to give you a heart. He's going to break your heart yes. for the things of God. Amen. For the people. Amen. Hallelujah, that need to come into the kingdom. When God gives us that word, that is a powerful word where he says everyone, every single person who keeps on asking, we don't ask one time and walk away from it and speak something negative. You've just buried that thing. You understand it? You've actually, you've aborted is a better term. But the word of God, when you study that in the Greek, it means keep on asking keep on seeking until you see it manifested or you know that you know amen he says everyone who keeps on asking everyone who keeps on seeking everyone who keeps on knocking what is Jesus saying he's saying I'll meet you at the level of your expectation I'll meet you there church it's up to us don't let this year pass by. You don't have to be disappointed because your God is not going to disappoint you. There might be circumstances that come that are disappointing. There might be things that, that you're going to have to walk through. But you don't have to be disappointed because what he says, amen, he says, I'll meet you. That that you're expecting, I will do it for you. You can rise above this. This stuff is this stuff. But I want you to walk up here in that level of expectation where I'll meet you. Yeah. Hallelujah. The widow in Luke 18 verse 1. We're not going to turn there. But 18 for 2018. Actually I'm going to be talking about 18 tomorrow. Because 18 is the picture of the fish hook. And it's the picture of harvest. But in, in, in Luke 18 verse 1. We have the story of the widow. The widow who went to the unjust judge. The judge who had no fear of God or no regard to man. Hey, are you hearing me today? But she kept on persisting. She wouldn't stop, church. She kept on coming again and again and again. Hallelujah. And that's the way we need to be. We, she was expecting something to change for her. She needed justice against the enemy in her life. And she wasn't going to quit because she knew what was her. She knew what she was to receive. There is a reason Jesus put that in the word. And I believe that that is what God expecting of his people in 2018. Amen. We're not going to quit because some little thing gets blown out of sword. Or some little person, some person says this or we, or offense comes or whatever. Come on someone. We're going to be persistent. And we don't need anybody around here to even agree but we know where we're going we know the direction God has taken and we're going to be persistent and we're going to keep expecting that thing because we already see it we're already expecting it with it and we know it's going to be burned and we know it's going to come forth because God has shown us by the eye of the spirit and God is confirmed and God is a God that is faithful and God is a God that will not lie hallelujah and God has said it then who are we to say uh, some negative things regarding it and abort it that baby is coming forth this year I'm talking spiritual I'm not saying you're all going to give natural children this year but you're going to bring birth bring forth amen God, you're going to release that new thing. It's a new thing that God is wanting to release. Something you've not walked in before. Are we ready for that? And you know what she received? You know the story. He finally said she's going to wear me out. So I'm just going to give her what she's asking me. And if, if this unjudged, ungodly judge would do this, then how much more, God? Amen. He loves you. 
This judge didn't love that woman. But if he will do that, how much more God for you when he's already said that's what he wants to do this year? What was Jesus saying in this story? Same thing. I'll meet you at the level of your expectation. That means no quitting. That means going forward. And when you, at the beginning of the story, the word of God says that man ought to pray and faint not or something of that sort. We can't faint. We just keep on praying. Amen. We keep on declaring. Yes. We keep on seeing what God has put in our heart. Amen. If you want something to happen, church, then we've got to expect it to happen. Hallelujah. Faith is awesome and we need faith. And the Bible says we can't even please God without it. But expectation. I see it as something even greater above. Put faith and expectation together. And it's yours. Hallelujah. Do you receive that today? You understand what I'm saying? You're expecting it for yourself. Hallelujah. You can have faith. You can believe the word. You can believe it's God's word that you received, or maybe it's a prophetic word. You can believe, yes, that's God's word. Yes, I believe that's God's word. But then you need to check where your expectation is. Are you expecting it for you? Are you expecting that God will do it? Look at your expectation. Do you really believe it? Only you can answer that. Do you really believe it? Do you really believe there are open doors for you this Amen. year? Do you really believe it? Do you really believe yes, yes. you can have life and life more abundantly? Yes. Do you really believe it? Let's turn to Jeremiah 29, verse 10. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, another scripture many of you know. Probably have quoted it. But I believe the Lord is speaking to us through this verse. Many of us need to hear this. Verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope then when you will call upon me and go and pray to me I'll listen and you will seek me and you will find me when you seek, search for me with all your heart I believe it's another version where instead of future and a hope the Lord Thought, the Lord has thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. In another version, it says expected end. Expected end. We're talking about expectation. God has an expected end for you. I believe he's got an expected end for you in 2018. He's got, he knows exactly what what needs to take place, what he desires to release for 2018. There's an expected and, not talking your whole life, but let's just talk about 2018. Come on, church. Amen. And he desires that. How is that going to be manifested in your life? You have to expect it. You have to expect it. Those thoughts that God has for you, those plans that he has for you, you have to expect that God will do what he says. Man, not just that he can. We know he can. We know, most of us, that he's able. But that you expect it. You are expecting it. It's like if I'm expecting a guest. I might not know the exact day, but I know they're coming. They said they were coming. I'm going to be expecting them. I'm going to be ready for it. I'm going to do what I can. To be prepared for their coming. I'm going to have that room already. Come on, are you yes, hearing me? Right. I'm going to have the food all stored up. And I know they're coming. I'm expecting them. I'm looking for them. I'm waiting for them. 
Are you looking for your promises to come to pass? Yes. Are you expecting it? An attitude of expectation releases the supernatural in your life, church. And it releases divine intervention in your life. Hallelujah. We're going to look at one more scripture. Are we all doing good? Amen. We've been challenged. Amen. Are we excited? Amen. Amen. If you're not excited, I need to pray for you. Amen. For sure. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 62, verse 5. And we're going to end with this. Many more things that could be said. Psalm 62, verse 5. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectations. My expectations, the psalmist says, are from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Amen. Because the things we are expecting, I'm telling you, church, they're from Him. And He'll re release them. We cannot be moved. And this might be new for some of us. And if you get moved, get back right into that place. Get yourself right back there. Don't condemn yourself. Don't put yourself down in a pit. Don't bury yourself. Are you hearing me today? It's okay to make a mistake. Just get yourself up and get right back in that place. And you might have to do that over and over. But I'm here to tell you that if you pass the test, and passing the test is getting back up again, getting back up again, and doing what you need to do, because your expectations will come to pass has hallelujah as you stay in that place of being immovable because you are expecting it are you hearing me today no more condemning ourselves no more come on church that is not god that is not God. That is not what God's word says. That is not what God says about you. That's what the enemy says. And we got to stop listening to what the enemy says. Hallelujah. We cannot walk through those doors. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. One other thing, I know I've already said this probably in praise and worship because I haven't preached yet this conference, but when God showed me that open door in Kenya, he said, you're going to have to leave some things outside yeah. that door. Right. You can't bring them in here. You cannot bring them into this place. Right. You got to leave that. Amen. Old, it might be good, it might not be. But whatever it is, it's a wait for the new thing that God is doing. Amen. And you can't bring it in. You can't bring in any weight. You can't bring any preconceived ideas. You cannot bring any religious spirits in. Come on, someone. You can't bring in that condemnation. You're not going to bring it in. Hallelujah. To walk through those doors and to receive. He said, for my expectation is from Him. This is the time that God is doing something totally new. Amen. Something totally new. Do we believe it? Yes. Amen. Amen. We're coming out of a wilderness time, many of us. Many of you. You're coming out. Amen. And you're coming out leaning on your beloved. I love that scripture. Hallelujah. I'm leaning more on him than I was in 2016 and I was in 2017 because of the hard things we've gone through. If it wasn't one thing, it was another and then another and then another. It was like, oh my goodness. You know, five years ago, I would not have probably been able to stand under those things. But you know, it's a process of getting stronger in Him. Amen. But everything that we've been through, it's caused me to hang on to Him and lean on Him. I would have not been able to go forward. I could have not in my strength. There were days I did not have the strength to do it. Amen. But leaning on Him. Amen. Hallelujah. And allowing Him to release Himself through us. Glory to God. Amazing things I could testify to you. But we are coming out of a wilderness time this year. And we're going to see the new spring up. Amen. We're going to spring it out. Let God just free you in this moment. There's things happening in the spirit right now as this word is going forth. Hope is rising in some of you. 
Amen? Letting go of some of those things you need to let go of. Don't carry those weights. They're not for you to carry. He paid the price. He died on the cross. Come on, someone. He's done it. He's paid the price that you don't have to carry any of it. Come on. He's done it or you don't have to carry it. Yes. Hallelujah. Let him carry it. Yes. Glory to God. And I also believe, church, as I'm getting ready to close, that this also refers to finances. No, it's not all about finances. That's not what I've been preaching. But it has to do with finances also. I believe it's Joel 2, 25 or something like that, where the Lord, where, where Joel says that God is repaying us for the years that the locust has eaten. I'm telling you, church. I've got a lot that's coming and being released to me. My husband and I. Come on, someone. There have been years. I'm claiming it. Glory to God. A lot of those things that have happened in the past. I'm telling you what. Those weren't God. God wasn't in them. And we need to recognize where the enemy has been. And allow God to show us. Come on. And step in and claim what is ours. We can claim it. We can take it back. I believe it's the year that God is repaying it's rep it's payment here amen and i believe like i just spoke but let me say it in another way that i believe that god has used and will continue to use the opposition that we have been through and believe me i've been through it been through it I thought 2017 was going to be my greatest year i've had to use the sword i've had to use the sword like you know it was the year of the sword And God is using the opposition of what we've been through church, the hard times, yes. the struggle, the unfair, the false accusations, the great injustice to set you up Amen. for a greater blessing. Hallelujah. Yes. And if you can see that, everything's going to be okay. Oh, if you can Amen. really believe that, yes. everything's going to be okay. You can let that all go. You can let that all self-pity. You can let it go. Come on. Yep. And you can rise. You can become all that God has called you to be. We are in a spiritual season, church, that is ripe for repayment. And don't let the enemy distract you. Don't let him distract you. Keep your focus on him. Hallelujah. I absolutely know what I'm talking about. Yes. When everything comes from every area that you've never walked through before, yep. you've got to remember the enemy wants to distract you. He wants you to turn here, here, here. And not like any of that is bad, but Lord is saying, it'll get you off course. You gotta keep focused. Are we focused? Are we determined to be focused as we continue to move forward in this year? Church, your breakthroughs, People of God, your breakthroughs, your blessings, your healings, your miracles, your new beginnings are at the mercy of your mom. Did you hear that? Yes. It's at the mercy of your mom. You need to speak those things that are not yes. as though they are. Amen. You need to not use your mouth to describe what you're going through and describe the situation but use your mouth to declare your expectation yeah, yeah, yeah. come on let's stand to our feet today Amen. god is good somebody Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah that there's awesome power in expectation it's powerful church and it produces supernatural manifestation which will bring life changing miracles for you in 2018 Hey man, hallelujah. Does anybody believe me today? Does anybody believe me today? Does anybody believe the word of the Lord today? Does anybody believe that God really does love you that much? That God would really do that much for you this year? Hallelujah. Glory to God. He has an expected end. He's got great things. Just this year. Some of us, it's hard for us to see way beyond that. But let's focus on Him for what He wants to release this year in your life. He is an expected end. And He's going to, as you come into that place as we heard this morning, of abiding in Him, 
Hiding in that secret place. Being hidden in Him. We heard that. I'm telling you, church, those things you've always wanted to hear, He will speak to you directly. It might confirm what a prophet has spoken over your life or a prophetess, but He will speak those things to you. He will show you the way. He will give you strategies. Amen? There's nothing too difficult for Him. Amen. Lord, we just thank You and praise You. God, will we ask that this expectation would just grow in your people. That they would allow it to bust forth in them. God, they would, if, if they're struggling with this word, that they get into that place of being hidden in you. In that place of being with you and in your word. So that you're able to download in them what they need to walk into the fullness that you have for them. So that you can show them. You can show them that maybe there's something that has stopped them over and over again, but you can show them why that is so they can leave it behind and walk through the new. Lord, we just thank you and praise you. And we give you all the glory for the new things that are going to be birthed this year. We thank you for the power of expectation. We thank you, God, that you've opened doors. And we thank you, Lord, it's for each and every one of us. And you said, God, if we'll ask, we're going to receive. You said, God, if we will seek, we will find. There's no question mark there. And when we knock, the doors are open. And we thank you and we praise you. God, we just release impartation today. God, let people open up their hearts wide. Let them be willing to take a risk. Let them come into that place of knowing you and knowing who they are in you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, 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 Amen. amen.